Hi, welcome to Midday Cafe. I'm one of your hosts, Terrell Barnes, with Mike Gennati. And with no today, hat. oh my goodness. Oh, you need your hat. Oh, there you go. That's the mic I know. That's the go. mic we're used <laughs> to seeing. Okay, great. So um, today we're going to talk about a, a recent event up in our Times Square offices in New York yes. that Mike, that you were um, presenting at and, and attended. Um, so let, would love to hear what was the uh, what was the event and tell us all about it. Yeah, so the event, it was great event. So as you're aware, we had recently uh, the Microsoft Ignite conference and there yeah. was tons uh, i mean just tons of stuff we did a podcast which by the way one of our customers of, of a certain vice president out there hi uh said that he uh actually listens to it and he finds it oh, helpful great. so it's worth it just for that um Love it. but you know at ignite so much went on and so this was called the microsoft post ignite uh life sciences and medtech executive forum in new york city and it was really targeted at the at executives so vps c levels etc great wow and so um what was your talk about mike yeah so uh everybody was like all ai 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 um, yeah so that was my talk was also on ai and the the title of it was becoming an ai organization with modern work and just really about the synthesis between productivity, employee engagement, and that all coming together within this modern work. So the people who are producing content, et cetera, and how that really is the, the some of the primary drivers of that high performance organization. That's awesome. Yeah, we've been hearing and, and talking a lot about becoming a high performance organization and how to use our underlying technology with Copilot and with our employee mm -hmm. experience platform, Viva, to enable yep. that. Yeah, so great. Well, yeah, it so, sounds like were a lot of, how, was it well attended? A lot of interest? Oh, yeah, yeah. So it the room was packed. We had, it's the largest conference room in the building on Times Square. Um, it was like, long, I took some pictures like from the way back and it's like, do, you know, one of those like long things where you got to put a telephone on each end for the person to talk to them. And it was it was packed. It was standing room only. Uh, wow. As an employee, I had to stand in the back. And right. yeah, it was well packed. It was uh, a lot of dialogue, Q&A um, and actually some stuff that I wanted to uh, share with with our audience. Okay. Kind of walk through quickly. Is that okay? That would be great. Yeah, I'd love that. I'm, I'm sure everybody would love to hear that. And I'd um, love to hear some of the feedback you got, were getting during the yes. Q&A sessions too. Yeah, I'll definitely, we'll share some of that. So um, this was my slides. I know normally we don't do any slides or visuals, but I wanted to, to show these real quick and they're easy to talk to. Uh, certainly there's our little shameless pitch. I did make the shameless pitch for the blog at awesome. aka.ms slash HLS blog. And I did my radio voice oh, good. twice and they laughed. Uh, so, but the uh, topic, you know, first I, I just talked about how rapidly things are transforming because chat GPT was only released one year ago. Yeah. One I mean year. I feel, I feel like I, I found out about it kind of right around this time last year, just because some of my daughter, who's, you know, 24, some of her peers are in their first, you know, year or two into, into work, and yeah. they were talking about it. So that Gen Z population that's just spot on into the technology told me about it. So that's how I found out about it. Oh, yeah. And it, and it was amazing. You know, so like what I first did was I wanted to kind of set up you know, so people could get really a clear understanding of, of what kind of an avalanche we're looking at in terms of things. So, I, you know, I showed this real quick and I see, you know, we talked about I remember years ago talking to people about social and using the Facebook example, the mobile phone, the Internet, you know, mobile phones took 16 years to reach 100 million. Internet took seven years. Facebook only four and a half. And I talked about social in the enterprise with SharePoint back then. 
Chat GPT took three months. Wow, that's incredible. The straight line up. Yeah, it's like not it's even a curve. There's no curve. It's like it's like this is happening. It's here. It's now. And one of the comments that came right out of this, getting to your point about you know what were people's feedback was, I heard a couple of them raise their hands and saying, you know, we recognize that, you know, the the sentiment was they recognize that if they're not getting in, in, in on the ground floor now, they're already too late. Yeah. And they're going to be behind their competition. And that there's going to be real world ramifications about not becoming an early adopter of this because they can't afford to wait till everything's just right and perfect because by then they're left behind. And yeah. that's problematic. Yeah. And you were sharing something with me earlier just about like a, an end user, an employee and how... Mm -hmm much this can help automate and give them time back on you know a daily basis and and when you look at quantifying that i mean it's yeah. huge so i can just it just makes me think yeah the the companies that get this right and start to upskill and train their employees on ai like right now are going to get that advantage well you're you're nailing it head on because there was a couple of things that came out of our conversations one Right off the bat, I got hit with the per cost per user per month, right? right. And they're like, look, we're already trying to do this, like to this slide, the employee showing engagement, productivity, employee experience, and AI and your productivity apps and how it all comes together. They're like, mm -hmm. you know, there's a per month per person cost, and we just can't. And that and and there was that old automatic way of thinking. And what I pointed out, I said, okay, let's just take a step back. I understand what you're saying, but let's let's quantify what we're actually talking about. I said, if you take one of your employees who's making, and I said, one of your line employees, person, you know, who's frontline a worker, frontline right? worker, right? Manufacturing, like we had pharma, they're meta, they're on the manufacturing line, in the bottling or whatever. And after doing some of the demos, I showed. Uh, PowerPoint and they showed a couple, they were just like, oh my God, all the time I could save. I said, take an employee who makes $17 an hour. And one okay. of them said, we don't have anybody that makes that. <laughs> they meant oh, everybody's it's much, much higher, more. Right, right. right? Okay. Even so their, say, say $20 an hour, right? Well, well, so $20 an hour, it gets even better. But I use, I said $17 an hour if they, do we all agree, based on what you've seen, they could save 30 minutes a week? Yeah, that'd be easy. Uh, one one PowerPoint, one Word doc, one email. Um, so what did you're... you show them? Did you show them how to build a document or what did what did what was your uh, demo? So I didn't have a lot of time for demos, so I did uh, two predominant ones. First, I showed I said because they're all execs, I said, how many of you present? everybody up right yeah um i said and how many of you struggle with a powerpoint building your powerpoints how uh, how long does it take you to build a powerpoint and a bunch of people said a lot one one individual said four hours or more sometimes wow and that it's such a it's so painful so i said let's say you then had a large document to create that from and i said it could be your annual report it could be, you know, anything. It could be a proposal for a new system and all. I said, I'm going to take one and it's called the Age of AI. It's a Microsoft paper, 35 pages long around AI that I sucked off the web, dropped in my OneDrive. I said, let's point PowerPoint to that and say, make me a presentation. And in about a minute and a half, it created a 40 something uh, slide deck. 40 something slides that were themed, pull the images that were available from the document in place where they belonged, where there wasn't. It grabbed royalty free images and placed those in. It also created the slide notes for every single slide. And if for the slide notes underneath that, it did a double space and then had the attribution from the document itself that it used to build that individual slide. Wow. They were like, that was one demo. The second demo I did was in Excel doing data representation 
for reporting, which they all agreed they all had to do on a frequent basis and a big time suck, you know, creating the, the visualizations and all that. So I showed them I took a 701 line sales data report. And in a matter of seconds, this took about 20 seconds, it, I created a new tab with all the visualizations capable uh, possible for that set of data with the corresponding power, uh, power pivot um, underneath so that you could slice and dice and dynamically, uh, you know, show different renderings of the info. So based on that, they were like half hour easy. Are you kidding me? And I said, if you did a half hour a week of time savings for a $17 an hour employee over four weeks, you've now more than paid for the solution. Everything else after that's cake. Wow. And the comment was, well, then heck, that's cheap. I said, <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, so you used Copilot in PowerPoint. Is that right? And that's Copilot correct. in Excel. Yeah. And you had it create these different presentations, Excel spreadsheet yeah. with visualizations. Wow. And from that productivity standpoint, they totally got it. But then where it got real interesting was the what's the natural question after that? And we had a, a CIO from one of our orgs who's been working with this, talking about how they've been trying to do analytics around all this, right? And because um, they were in the early access program. And I said, and then I said, well, let's bring in now the employee experience and engagement platform, which is Viva, and where we're lighting that up. And the first thing I showed was the Viva Insights dashboard for Copilot awesome. and bringing all that data survey. So you got your subjective data coming from Glint around there, what people were experiencing and seeing. You had the objective data coming from the system and then building these very rich reports. And then they're like, so how do we get that? I want that. I need that. I have to have that with it. And they said, well, that comes with the Viva suite. So I got to get Viva just for that. I said, well, not just for that. And then we talked about where it's lighting up in answers, where it's lighting up in um, uh, in learning and skilling and a, a whole week. Right, then we right. went through all that. So then it starts to become, oh, I get this. It really is the two of them hand in yeah, hand. Because yeah. you're creating that whole wonderful experience for the, for the employee, for the end user. Yes. <laughs> But then you're also creating just a powerful set of insights and analytics for business leaders to really, truly be data driven yep. and to be measuring the impact of these new technologies that they're and also getting insight into where upskilling is needed. Um, and so just a, yeah. a whole, you know, beautiful um new world that's created by taking all these pieces of technology and then then um, using that um, kind of the change management and the transformation aspect mm -hmm. of it, which is what we really need partners, that partners are there to help because you yes. can buy this technology, but if you don't have a good like deployment plan and kind of phased approach where you're really yes. prioritizing which of the workloads are going to have the biggest impact first, then you're, you're missing out. So so it's really important. Did y'all talk about that at the conference, Mike? Uh, they did. We did talk about that a bit. That came up, the, in, in, especially around the planning and that iterative approach, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, rolling things out with a, a pilot group and then uh, taking those lessons learned, rolling that back in. But what you just said about the skilling, too, that was something else that they were like, oh, wait, because they thought it was going to be skilling just for me the individual where I could see my personal skilling thing and put together my own plan. But then the, and the complaint had been with Viva learning, they were saying, yeah, but how do, you know, we're having to stitch together all these learnings that we're learning and, and this resources to help people get trained on AI. And I said, well, actually, <laughs> and I showed them skilling dashboard, right. From a, not the individual, but looking organizationally and managerial and being able to have it suggest learning tracks and academies yeah. and the content and pulling it together for them. 
Yeah, because I can I can have Copilot create a customized learning path for me based on what I have yeah. access to and what I'm interested in learning and what's available. And then but the learning admins and managers can also do that for their teams and for the whole yeah. organization yeah. or parts of the organization. So it's that same like there's the value for the employee at the end user, but then there's a ton of value also for yeah. um, leadership. Yeah, it was it. Was, so, like I said, great conversation. It was great to talk with people aside in between sessions before. Um, it's always great talk around coffee. Uh, yeah, and so, absolutely. Uh, had some great conversations. So that was it. Was really and it was good just to get out in person, seeing people because, as you know, you know, like me, I'm ninety nine point nine 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 percent virtual these days. Yeah. Um, but that was great. Yeah. And up in the city for this time of year is always so festive. It was. I got some great uh, video. I, I got in late. I, I actually have a niece there. I, I didn't get a chance to even see. Yeah. Um, Because I, I got in late, but I did take time to go get into cruise around Times Square. Got some uh, dinner at Junior's so I could have dessert cheesecake after. Nice. What I need. Very nice. But there's one other thing I wanted to mention to people. Okay. And I'm going to pull it up. I have it. So if they go to the blog at aka.ms slash HLS blog, that's aka.ms slash HLS blog, um, started on Monday, the 12 days of Copilot. I should have said 12 business days. So Monday through Fridays, uh, where the first five are live, started with uh, Outlook. That What they're meant to be are very like bite-sized, uh, pieces where a user can come in and they can share this with their colleagues. And it, you know, so for example, in this one, talking about the use of Outlook and, and generative AI in helping ease that stress around creating emails and sending them. And uh, then I have resources for each one afterwards. These are pre staged, so they go live on Mondays at eight, uh, excuse me, each day at 8 a.m. Uh, the videos are all done in pre staged. You know, but stuff like that, like I had, uh, this was, um, pow oh, I showed two PowerPoint, one creating from scratch, and then the other one was essentially the demo I did yesterday, oh, not yesterday, Wednesday for that uh, conference, and here it created, I forget how many slides, um, but you can see, and it was generating all the bullet points around from that document I pointed it at, uh, and then generating the slides, the slide notes, the theme, um, everything. This is awesome. I can't wait to watch, Mike. Thanks for doing this. So yeah. we now have a bite-sized resource that we can go in and we can learn how to use Copilot. 12 different everyday work. days of it for everyday work. 12. Awesome. 12. I don't Thank even have enough so fingers much. to count 12. <laughs> Yay. Well, this is great, Mike. Yeah. Well, and it's good to see you. You too. It's been hope, a while. Hope, I know. Hopefully we can do it this in person again sometime after the Soon. holidays, I guess. Right. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Awesome. Oh, cool. Well, you have a meeting with one of our customers who I do. was in attendance at the event. So that's awesome. great. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I wish you, uh, you know, have a great weekend, Terrell, and to all of our listeners and viewers. Thanks, and, uh, Mike. You yeah. too. Take care, everybody. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.